Ooh, it is two rolls, and I am back to my usual line of work once again. This summer, however, I'm in the desert southwest in the state of Utah, so my focus may be perhaps more on this region in terms of fire season, although I will cover whatever seems most pertinent and that others may not be touching on. Now, this story tonight focuses on Utah and neighboring states, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, poor Colorado, eh, and Nevada, uh, right at the moment, not to downplay what many of you are now suffering in the Midwest, God, God be with you, I hope nothing happens in terms of severe storms, nor to downplay the four severe fires in Colorado. But tonight, reporting from Utah, this is Two Wolves. This is National Weather Service report, current report. This, of course, indicates, as you'll remember from last year, red flag warning. We've had extreme temperatures right across the whole southwest, coupled with vicious, hot, scorching hot winds, mostly from the southwest, drought conditions, unrelenting heat, all a recipe for disaster. You see the red flag warning, which was much smaller 24 hours ago, now extends not only through what's called the Dixie area of Utah, been to Price, there's some concern here now near Salt Lake, Nevada, Colorado. There's also wind advisories in these regions. This is the, the dun sort of color. Have a look. At 8.53 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, that's eight minutes ago, winds from the south, scorching winds from the south, mind you, still 87 degrees at nearly 9 p.m. That may give you an indication. Satellite weather map. Looking up here, there's also a concern about peak wind gusts. Wind gusts. Some of this has died down, some has not. High winds. Potential hazardous weather during the next seven days, and red flag warning today and tomorrow for the entire region highlighted. So, in the interest of brevity, I won't go to these links. You can, of course, www.wrh.noaa.gov. Very serious. Most of the people I know don't, are not in Utah, but I'm sure there are viewers who are. This is from the Salt Lake Trib, Salt Lake Tribune site online here from Weather 2, News 2. Utah forecast hot, dry, and windy conditions ahead. Mind you, still continuing with last year's drought, wildfire risk, and the other component thrown in, another toss of the dice, thunderstorms as well, there's some outside the window now, will bring lightning, but little rain. So high winds, Santa Ana winds, Scirocco winds, dry lightning, extreme heat. By Bob Mims, Salt Lake Tribune. This is yesterday, but it's being updated today. Utah's sizzling hot temperatures have abated some, and it's been 100 earlier in the week, which, mind you, this is early June. That's rare for here. Very rare. Record-breaking weather. But thunderstorms with little rain were expected at the midweek along with gusty winds, a recipe for potential wildfires. As a result, the National Weather Service put the western two-thirds of the state under a hazardous weather outlook advisory extending from Tuesday toward the week's end. Critical fire weather conditions were especially expected to plague southwestern Utah, forecasters warned. Indeed, Utah's Dixie expected high temperatures Wednesday in the low hundreds as winds of 15 to 25 miles an hour fanned the tinder dry region. Actually, all of Utah is tinder dry, apart from the upper slopes of the Wasatch. The Wasatch Front looked for highs in the mid-90s with these gusts, which we've been having all evening. Very, very serious. Here was Monday's record ceiling heat. Low overnight on Monday of 74. This is Alta. These are ski areas. This is like eight, 9,000 feet. 93 and 97 in price. And the Utah Test Range, which is all desert at 96, all beating previous daytime high records only in early June. So, um, having gone there, 
let's go to NIFSI, our excellent and trustworthy friends at NIFSI. We don't always say trustworthy in connection with the government, but I still put some trust in fire services. Predictive services, NIFSI.gov, National Interagency Fire Center. This is not good, folks. National Significant Wildland Fire Potential Outlook. Issued June 1. June, July, and August through September. The June, July, and August through September 2013 significant wildland fire potential forecasts included in this outlook represent the cumulative forecast of the 11 Geographic Area Predictive Services Units and the National Predictive Services Unit. They're very good at this now. So all of this is above normal. Anything in the scarlet, look at the vast majority of California. Here we have... All of this region, Arizona, New Mexico, southern Colorado, bits of Utah, all in the above normal danger. Uh, and the rest of this region increasing to above normal. This will be below normal, this belt here, because it's not being such drought conditions. But you can come here and read this. Significant fire potential above normal for much of the entire mountains and Interior mountains and foothills of California, Sacramento Valley. Significant fire potential will increase to above normal in Arizona, western New Mexico, and far southern areas of Utah and Colorado. In July, significant fire potential will be above normal over much of California and Oregon, Washington, and parts of Idaho and far northern Nevada. This is just heads up. It's a good site. August and September, here's your danger area. And, of course, we just don't know what's going to go on from here. This is a U.S. drought monitor. It's worth watching, especially if you're at all involved in agriculture or environmental work. Just following the passage of these things in general. All on the Predictive Services page at NIFC. Here's NIFC's homepage. We'll get real familiar with this throughout the summer. So, that's where you want to come. That's the place to be. Then we'll look at... Let's see. I was just going to go to large fire maps for a moment. And our prayers are, of course, with Colorado. Then you click over here, you go to, so home page, fire information, maps, large fire maps. That's your route to get to this information. Current large incidences, inc I'm sorry, current large incidents, this is a lot for early June. So I would say, based on my fire, my experience in the world of wildland fire for many years, we're looking at a worse year than last year. As we know, it's hotter than last year. These are current large incidences in Mexico. Three very bad ones in Colorado, as you know if you've been following the evacuations. Cause for concern in New Mexico. And this Nevada didn't have that so much last year in Nevada. Okay, this is Two Wolves Out, the first of my fire reports for this year. Everybody be safe and be sure to have a defensible perimeter. Whether you live in urban areas or rural areas, be sure to have a defensible perimeter around your home and land. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Matak and we are all related to Wolves Out.